Today we have a pretty nice integral. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of log x times the inverse tangent of x. And the solution development and the answer itself are pretty satisfying. So let's not waste any time. We're going to call the integral i. And how exactly am I going to deal with this? Well, my approach here would be to take this inverse tangent function and express it as an infinite series because that makes work a lot easier. So the inverse tangent can be expressed as the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1. And this is valid for the absolute value of x being less than 1. So yeah, this infinite series does converge to the uh, inverse tangent of x on our interval of integration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the inverse tangent by its series expansion. So we have log x times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 dx. And because this log x term is independent of the index variable k, we can just slip it inside the summation operator. And we can write this now as the integral from 0 to 1 of log x, oh, the sum over k, that is, of log x times negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k plus 1, all divided by 2k plus 1, and we're integrating with respect to x, of course. Now this is a pretty cool structure, but it gets even better if you switch up the order of the summation and the integration operators. So you have the sum over the non-negative integers k of the integral from 0 to 1 of log x times, now this term here, oh sorry about that, this term here is independent of the x variable with respect to which we're integrating. So we can just pop it outside the integration operator and let me just um, add some space here. Uh, like this. Yeah, much better. I can write this more clearly. Okay, cool. And we can do the same thing for this 2k plus 1 in the denominator. So we can just pop these terms outside of the uh, integration. And we're left with the integral from 0 to 1 of log x times x to the 2k plus 1 dx, which is quite easy to evaluate because all you need is a simple integration by parts approach. So we're going to be differentiating this log function and integrating the x to the 2k plus 1 term here. So on one differentiation, you get 1 by x, and on one integration, you get x to the 2k plus 2 divided by 2k plus 2. And that's pretty much enough. Okay, nice. So all of this implies that i now equals the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1 times uh, this structure here, which is, of course, x to the 2k plus 2 divided by 2k plus 2 times log x, and the limits of integration are 0 and 1. Minus sign here, integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2k plus 2 divided by 2k plus 2 times 1 by x dx. Okay, cool. And uh, on multiplying the x terms here, we're going to get a x to the 2k plus 1. So let me just clean this up a bit. So x to the 2k plus 1 dx and curly braces closed. Okay, nice. Now, once again, you have some pretty easy stuff to evaluate. I mean, just look at this first term here. Uh, x to the 2k plus 2 times log x. In the limit, as x approaches 0, you can verify using L'Hopital's rule that this 2 approaches 0. And for x approaching 1, uh, log x approaches 0. So again, the term approaches to 0. So all of this stuff collapses to 0 with this really simple integral to evaluate. So all you're going to have at the end of it is the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1. And you have this factor of uh, 2k plus 2. So you can just factor out a 2 there and you get k plus 1, 1 half. And you're going to have to multiply this by x to the 2k plus 
2 divided by 2k plus 2 again, with the limits being 0 and 1 and oh, cannot forget this extra negative sign. Okay, cool. So again, you can factor this term out and you can factor out uh, another 2 here. So you got 1 by 4 and you can write this as k plus 1 squared now. Okay, nice. And evaluating the limits just gives you 1, right? So this is the structure that you're left with. And now all we need to do is evaluate the sum. And for evaluating it, all we need is a nice partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so we can write this as a divided by k plus 1 plus b divided by k plus 1 squared plus c divided by 2k plus 1. And this is pretty easy to carry out because you can just write this as 1 being equal to a times uh, k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 plus b being multiplied by a 2k plus 1 term and then c times this k plus 1 squared term. So if you let k plus 1 be 0 or just let k be equal to negative 1, then you get 1 being equal to a 0 here plus uh, b times negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1 plus another 0 there, then this will imply that b will be equal to negative 1. Okay, nice. And if you let k plus, uh, 2k plus 1 be equal to 0, then this will imply that k equals negative 1 half. So you're going to have a 1 being equal to a 0 again, plus... Uh, another 0 plus c times mm, negative 1 half plus half plus 1 is positive 1 half, square that, then you get 1 by 4. So this implies that c is going to be equal to 4. And to get the value of a, then all we need is one arbitrary value. Let's pick k being equal to 0 because that seems pretty damn convenient. So if k equals 0, then 1 equals a is unknown, then you get 1. You get another one uh, plus b, so that's a negative one times one uh, plus four again times one. So this sorts out to a being equal to three negative two. Okay, nice. So that's your required partial fraction decomposition. So we know that one by how did I write this again? Okay, k plus one squared times two k plus one equals the first term was a so that's a negative 2 divided by k plus 1 then the second term was b so that's a negative 1 by k plus 1 squared then you have this 4 divided by 2k plus 1 okay cool and now we can uh, insert this partial fraction decomposition into our integration result so this implies that i equals negative 1 fourth of a collection of sums in fact it's uh, negative 2 times the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k divided by k plus 1. Uh, another minus sign here, minus the sum over k of 1 by k plus 1 squared. Oh, it was a negative 1 to the k term. Yeah, you have this alternating term as well, quite nice. Plus 4 times the sum over k of 1 by 2k plus 1. Again, negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1, that is. Now, these are three very, very nice, uh, very easy series to evaluate. So the first one here, the sum over the non-negative integers uh, of negative 1 to the k divided by k plus 1. If you replace k by k plus 1, then you can write this as the sum over the positive integers of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k, which we recognize as the natural log of 2. Okay, nice. So that's one series that I'm dusted with. The other one here, the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1. Remember, in the start of the video, I referenced the series expansion for the inverse tangent, which is, of course, uh, the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1. Okay, cool. And if you plug in x equals 1 here, uh, then you have inverse tangent 
1 and you're left with a 1 over there as well. So yeah, this is exactly what we needed. This is exactly, is exactly the series we needed, which is inverse tangent 1, and so that is pi by 4. Okay, nice. This is quite nice. This is cool. This is awesome so far. And you're only left with one series to evaluate. We're done with this one. We're done with this one. And what about this one? This here is one case of the Dirichlet eta function. And it's the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at 2. And the Dirichlet eta function is defined as uh, the sum over the positive integers of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by uh, k to the s, where s is some complex number with a positive real part. And this here evaluates to pi squared by 12. Nice, that's one half of the Raymond zeta function. So a very nice cousin of the Raymond zeta function we have here. So we have negative 1 fourth and this is negative 2 times uh, the natural log of 2. So that's a, that can be written as 1 by log 4, uh, log 1 by 4. Then you have this uh, negative pi squared by 12 term as well. And then you have this 4 times uh, pi by 4. So that can be just written as pi. Okay, nice. So that is a pretty nice result and a very nice, smooth, and satisfying solution development for a pretty nice integral. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.